Hello, and welcome to our continuing series about the Sigma FP camera. Now, last week we got the unboxing, we saw what it came with, looked at some of the unique features, some of the things that we maybe had some concerns about, and I said then that I would take the focusing as the next challenge. Now, this week turned out to be a lot busier than I thought. Like a lot of you, I actually have work that I have to take care of first, but I did get a chance to play with the camera a little bit. And so what you're gonna get now is really my initial impressions of the focusing, not my final conclusion. And I say that because of three reasons. The first off is that I haven't had enough time to actually play with this camera to consider myself to be a master of it. I'm always amazed at the amount of YouTube reviews where somebody gets a camera and 30 minutes later, they're declaring it legendary because they took three shots of their kitten in the living room, right? You have to put it through its paces and I just haven't had the chance to do that yet. So I've had limited hands-on. The second thing is, is that I don't know where the camera's sweet spot is yet, especially when it comes to Sigma. Sigma tends to make products that do certain things amazing. And those amazing things, if they're valuable to you, you're willing to forgive some of the other shortcomings. Um, but I haven't really had a chance to put the camera through its paces. So yes, I have to look at how to shoot in, in bright light and natural light in studio. How's it shoot at night? I, I need to mount native L mount glass to it. Uh, I did some gimbal tests, but I used the 45 and not a wide angle. So there's still a bunch of things that we have to do. And we're gonna have a continuing series of videos every week, basically putting the, the Sigma FP through another challenge and seeing how it responds. And then the third reason is, although I'm very comfortable as a photographer, video is still relatively new to me. So I may be doing some things wrong. And if I am, and I know that most of you, if not all of you out there, have a lot more experience than I do, uh, just drop me a comment. Say, hey, John, that was cool, but you know, this is the way that most people would really shoot it, or this is the way that we'd really use that piece of equipment. And if I have the chance, I'll try to work it into the schedule and we'll do another test. So the first thing we're gonna look at is my first impression of it as a stills camera in terms of its focusing. That's pretty straightforward. We'll do that in this video, and then we're having another follow-up video right after this in the two-part series of the focusing initially uh, that's gonna talk about the video part of it. Now, one of the first comments that I got from a subscriber was, uh, from Miguel, is can you show this on a three-axis gimbal, for example? And Miguel, yes, we can. And so that's what we did. We went out and shot it with the AK-45, both in this kind of run and gun gimbal setup, and we also shot it uh, in the cage itself. Um, so we're gonna show you the results, at least the initial results of both of those, but there's still a lot more testing because I did what Miguel asked me to do, which was to shoot it with the 45. But for a lot of these gimbal shots, most people are gonna use a wide angle, and I just don't have a native Elma wide angle piece of glass yet, but we'll get all that and we'll be able to put it through its paces soon. So let's take a look at the stills capability in terms of its focusing first. So let's take a quick look at Sigma's focusing menu. So if you press down on the dial, you get to select whether you want to go autofocus or single focus, or if you're in continuous focus, you'll be able to select tracking. While you're down, also, if you press the auto exposure lock, you can control the size of the, of the focus range, as well as the position, which particular focus point now. This has 49 contrast detection points, and that's the first point that you have to kind of think about, right? Um, if you're trying to compare this against, say, a Sony that has 400 focus points, or against cameras that are using both contrast and phase uh, detection, or using dual pixel, those are very mature focusing systems, and Sigma's just not quite there yet. But the contrast detection does work well, and keep in mind that contrast detection, when it does work, is very sharp, and it is the same type of format that's used by many beloved Leica cameras, which are extraordinarily expensive and highly desired. So, again, whatever you know, right tool for the right job. Um, along with this, if we go press up to the top, we can select continuous or single focus or manual. So if we put it back into continuous, and now I press on this bottom, you can see that I can put tracking on. And this will allow me to now place where I want the tracking point to start. And it will then track through that frame. If we put in auto mode and go back to the exposure lock, now we can control where the autofocus should actually prioritize. On top of that, there is a, you can barely see that, but it, that's the face and then the eye detection or totally turned off. So there are other features. Um, you do have the 
magnification to be able to focus and hit a button where it will zoom in. Um, it has that automatic for manual override where if you start to do manually focus, it will automatically go into a zoom mode. So that you have, uh, you can see really sharp on the edges. It has focus peaking, all the things you'd expect uh, from a focusing system. So let me give you a quick demonstration of where contrast detection can struggle a little bit. Contrast detection works great. I mean, when it actually nails focus, it tends to be razor sharp, but it can also be easily confused. So we're gonna set our camera up to kind of maximize this just for demonstration purposes. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in a single focus. We'll leave it in autofocus, single. And we're gonna go ahead and make it very small. So now I got a very targeted autofocus. If I take it and I put it onto my monitor where it's basically all black and I try to do an autofocus, I get a flash in red. It can't find focus because there is no contrast. If I move it over just slightly to the edge, the exact same distance, it now has contrast that can lock in. If I go to the wall, the wall is a solid neutral color. Again, I can't get con any kind of focus, it can't find contrast. But if I take it to the picture just above it, the exact same distance, I get focus. And it's not just black and white. So for example, um, hopefully you'll be able to see this. I have this blue water bottle. And I can't get focus because it's solid blue. There is no contrast. But if I bring it up just a little bit to the lip, Wham, I got contrast. So this is where contrast detection can struggle. And where do we lose contrast? Obviously, when we have a more of a monochrome environment, but also when we start losing light. When we start getting dark, start losing light, we start losing contrast. And this is where contrast detection can struggle. And what will often happen is it will lock in to the wrong areas because it's looking for those lines of contrast. So what's my first impression of the focusing system for the stills camera? Keep in mind again, this is my first impression because I haven't used it a lot yet. Um, but you did see when, if you watched my last video, when I unboxed it, I took about a dozen shots just to show that it was actually working. Uh, and then I spent about 30 minutes the next day just looking at the manual and getting used to the camera. And when I thought I had the focusing um, down to where I thought I could use it, uh, I saw or noticed that my dog was sitting right out in front of my office. And I just kind of leaned over and took a, a shot. And this was the very first shot I've really taken with this camera. And it nailed focus. The color looks great. The detail looks great. I fully expected that. The 24 megapixel sensor in there, I'm assuming is probably the same sensor that's in the Sony cameras. And it's a great sensor. So that's no surprise at all. Um, but I was able to nail eye on both of my dogs when I was just sitting there and they're running around. Uh, so I decided to take it outside. Now, I really didn't have a plan and none of these shots are spectacular. Uh, and that really wasn't the intent. Uh, I wasn't really looking for any content. Uh, I just wanted to see how the focusing would function as I walked around the neighborhood. And I got outside and it was extremely cold. So I made it about a half a block and I said, okay, we're going to wait for a warmer day or I'm going to do some indoor shots because I just wasn't prepared for how cold it had gotten. Our weather really changed quick. Um, normally at this time of year, actually a couple weeks earlier where I live, we have amazing colors in the fall. We get lots of reds and oranges and yellows and, you know, along with the greens and the trees. Uh, most of that color, unfortunately, is gone and leaves are falling. But there was a couple of trees that were still out there. And you can see in the image, uh, where you know the reds are great and the greens, which are Sigma's kind of known for, are still uh, very vibrant. Uh, again, I had no problem nailing focus. Um, I took some shots in this tall grass in my backyard. It was blowing very fast, and it nailed it with you know great detail. Um, and then I took uh, some shots of Grace, and she was a real trooper because she was not feeling good that day. She was actually recovering from the flu, and she was lying on the couch and said, okay, I'll, I'll go out real quick and take a couple shots with you. And it had no problem nailing focus on her, and it followed the eye very well, and all that worked great. So I think this is a good camera if you're looking, at, if you're doing portraits, you're doing architecture, landscape, fine art, you're not going to have a problem with it. In terms of its tracking, well, that's a different story. So it tracks relatively slow, which is not to be unexpected. It's only got 49 contrast detection points on there. So if you're trying to 
shoot sports or wildlife, I think it would be pretty frustrating. And I base this not just as a matter of opinion, but I base it on years of experience as a sports photographer. For a long time, I shot events in sports, uh, eventually retiring when my son's athletic career ended. Um, but I have a lot of experience shooting American football, um, soccer, basketball, gymnastics, palm, track and field, for example, and you can just see a few shots here. And so I have a pretty good idea of the focusing system that's required to kind of nail these shots. Uh, I, this is something I would not take out onto the football field. I think that would be a, a very frustrating night trying to nail shots because it is fairly slow on acquiring. Uh, totally fine, again, for portraits and architecture and landscape, but when you have moving objects, it takes longer to acquire and then having a consistent tracking, that really requires a pretty mature and sophisticated focusing system. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, this camera is really kind of not at that stage. So again, it depends on what you're using it for and what you get value out of. People will freak out on certain specs. And here's the thing, guys, it's only valuable or it's only a detriment if it's important to you. Meaning that if you have no desire to shoot sports, if you have no desire to shoot wildlife, you're gonna be doing portraits and stills and you know fine art or architecture, or whatever it might be. <clears throat> Having hundreds and hundreds of focusing points that have all this dynamic tracking is great, but you'll never use it. It has no value to you. So when I talk about the fact that I'm okay with the focusing system as a stills camera, it's because the work that I now do doesn't require a lot of dynamic focusing. So a case in point is the fact that I used to shoot these sporting events and did require a camera that had amazing tracking and, and low light autofocusing and things of that nature. I'm still involved with these programs even though I no longer shoot the events. Uh, I'm now involved in doing athlete portraits and doing promotional work, as you can see from some of these. And this is just around the football and, and a couple of palm. So what used to be really important to me, the tracking is not necessarily the highest priority anymore. Um, I totally understand, you know, again, Cameras are expensive, and when we buy it, we want to make sure they're feature-rich and versatile. But so many photographers I know buy cameras with tons of features and 100 megapixel sensors, and they just don't use it, or their work just doesn't justify it. So you have to kind of keep in mind it's a personal experience, and what is it to you that's important, and are you really going to get value out of this? And so that's our initial look at the stills focusing capability of the Sigma FP. Now this is by no means a any kind of conclusion. This is just an initial impression. Uh, we haven't had a time to do a lot with this camera. Uh, so we're gonna continue to make videos and explore it further, uh, taking that focusing system uh, into things like night shooting. I wanna do some uh, street photography in Detroit. And also uh, next week, hopefully do a studio shoot where we're going to do a kind of an old world Renaissance type of portrait, very painterly looking. Uh, that's going to require some low light and I think it's going to to really you know, push the camera to its capabilities around focusing so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, well, also there's no con solid conclusion yet on the actual tracking. It is you know slower which is expected in this type of contrast detection um, but we'll just see if we can get it out either into a gym or into a field. The weather has turned here so our opportunities to get outside of really um, kind of reduced greatly here in the last couple weeks. But we'll try to take it uh, out to the field or into a gym and put it through a test there as well. I already did the initial shooting for the video focusing and that should hopefully be up in the next couple of days. See you then.